I want to share with you guys the greatest tax break, I think, in the tax code, at least for people that aren't mega, mega wealthy, and that is the tax-free capital gain exclusion on a primary residence. The rule is you have to live in it for at least two years, to the day, not a day less. And sometimes if you're shopping for a home and they say, oh, close of escrow can't be until you know, August 2nd or something, it's because they're trying to hit that two-year limit. And we've had people with a lot of appreciation in homes the last several years, so you may run into that. So I want to share with you guys how I have taken advantage of that. You may or may not know, but my husband and I are house flippers. And the house that we bought in Dana Point, uh, let's see, it was 10 years ago almost, I think. Um, we originally bought it to flip, and then we decided to move into it ourselves after we'd already owned it for a couple of weeks. I asked my husband, can you make it any bigger because the three bedrooms, two and a half baths, isn't going to cut it for our family with four kids, his mom living with us two dogs and a cat. We had a full crew of people and animals, not the animals need that much space. So he said, yes, I can make it bigger. So we expanded that house from 1890 square feet to over 3,400 and created a six bedroom, five bath house, maybe four and a half bath. Anyway, it was amazing and big and served us well. We ended up living in it for eight years and it not only served us well, but it appreciated a lot. I will tell you that during that time, um, style of decor changed a lot. When we first moved into it, we had put in wood look ceramic plank tile, which was popular then and very um, durable and child proof and dog and cat proof. Like if people or animals had any spills or messes or accidents, it was so easy to clean up. But I tell you, when we sold it two years ago, that kind of flooring was out of style. So we had to demo it all out. That, and we had some carpet in it still, and we put real wood in it, which I don't know if I would still do today. Now I'm a fan of luxury vinyl plank, but all of this to say, even though we had bought it and renovated it back in um, 2013, 2014, we had to redo it again when we went to sell it a couple of years ago in 2021. But that home, thankfully, we did make about half a million dollars on in appreciation. We spent a lot fixing it, but we still had a whole lot of profit in it and that was tax free. We lived in the home for about eight years as I may or may not have mentioned there. And then we moved into this flip in San Clemente. So this one we've actually lived in already two and a half years. We weren't intentionally going to move into this when we first bought it. In fact, we'd worked on it for a couple of years before we decided, hmm, maybe we can move into that one. It all worked out really well. We've now lived in it long enough. So if we wanted to move, um, we probably do have another half a million dollars of appreciation and gain in it, so we could take that tax-free too. In fact, we may do that. If you stay tuned for future videos, you'll see more progress on the house that we're renovating next door. We bought that one to flip, and after we were in escrow a week, I looked at my husband and said, you know, we should probably move into that. We should probably sell this, take the tax-free gain, and move again, and just keep doing it. So we keep moving when there's something you know better and we've got gain and appreciation in the house that we can take tax free when you think about how many hours you would have to work or how much work you would have to do to net half a million dollars if you're a married couple or two hundred and fifty thousand dollars if you're single how much work you'd have to do and then pay tax on it like maybe you'd have to make seven hundred thousand dollars of income to walk away with five hundred thousand dollars that is a lot of human effort work whatever you want to call it, years of work. So whatever you can do to take advantage of home ownership and wealth growth through home ownership, I highly recommend it. Maybe you don't want to do these live and flips like me, although this one's pretty easy. I'm just moving next door, but maybe that's not what you want to deal with, but at least own a home and get that appreciation because that could prove to be your greatest source of and your easiest source of wealth growth rather than renting. So that's it for today. That's my views and perspective on the greatest tax benefit in the tax code for the non-mega wealthy. Make sure you subscribe for more great videos and comment below. What are your thoughts?